Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining me here today for another piano lesson with Warren. My name is Warren McPherson. This is a channel where we talk about gospel music, how you can become a better gospel pianist. And so we discuss a lot of that from the beginner stuff right up into the advanced, complex, crazy substitutions and reharmonizations and just all that fun stuff. This is a channel where you learn about all of that. And every Wednesday, there's a new tutorial that comes your way. So don't forget to subscribe so you can be up to date. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about altered extensions. Yes, this is a topic that we've been discussing for the past few weeks. And I've been getting a lot of messages and emails from folks saying, I've been trying to use these altered extensions in my songs and at church and, and it's not working it sounds wrong it's ruining the songs and so i decided all right, i'm going to shoot a tutorial that sort of outlines six things to keep in mind or six six things to work on constantly to perfect this because this is not something that just comes overnight it is an advanced concept and so there's a lot of hurdles you have to jump over before you can get to the place where you can use these comfortably and effectively. So hopefully in this video, what I'm about to share will give you some uh, perspective, you know, to think about. So you're not just randomly out of the blue trying to use all these altered extended chords and ruining the song. All right. <clears throat> so the first step I want to look at is that altered extensions is not a beginner concept. That's the first thing. So if you're a beginner, you're automatically excluded from this uh, experimentation. And I'm not saying this to put you down. It is very important for beginners to focus on fundamentals. Absolutely important. I can't stress how important it is. I have come across so many students who have been stuck at a beginner or an intermediate for years simply because they refuse to focus on fundamentals. And they somehow believe that if I could just find this shortcut, then I can catapult myself to the advance without having to do any of this boring fundamental stuff. And they continue to wander around in that wilderness, just like the children of Israel for 40 years, stuck because they refuse to focus on the fundamentals. And so when I say this is a begin uh, is not a beginner's concept, so you shouldn't be messing with this stuff. It's not to put you down or to ex you know create some form of exclusivity where you will never get to this level. It is to help you to stay focused on the things that matter at that level. Because as I said earlier, 
There's a lot of things that needs to be in place before we start using altered extensions. So if you're a beginner, you can watch this video. I'm sure you'll learn something. You always learn something when you watch my videos. But don't feel bad. Don't beat up yourself if all this is sort of over your head and it doesn't make sense to you because there are a lot of things that you need to do before you get here. And those things that you need to do, I've already explained in a lot of other YouTube videos and in my courses and so on. So the roadmap's there to help you get here. I'm predominantly talking to the folks now who are more strong, intermediate, can't get to this level. These tips are to help them more so than you, beginners, to make sense of this. So that's the first one. It's not a beginner's concept. And if you look honestly within yourself, you can say, I'm a beginner. I really need to focus on X, Y, and Z. Step number two is to know the chords for the songs you're trying to alter really well. In the intro, I was playing the Judith Mac McAllister, uh, Oh, Give Thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good. He is good. See, I can play the song just the way it was composed, the way it was recorded, without any fancy stuff. I know the song really well first. So when the time comes now to start experiment, I know the spots that I'm thinking about experimenting with. And so what I see a lot after conversing with folks who have been emailing me about this is that they're trying to take a song that they don't know how to play yet. They cannot play the song the way it was written yet without any extensions. And then they're trying to Hey, I'm going to use passing chords and reharm this and alter stuff. And so it's just creating a mess because there's no foundation for you to build on yet. Yeah, and so knowing the chords of the song really well is that foundation. So when I start to do, for he is worthy, worthy for me. See, I start using substitutions, but also altered chords. Uh, thank you. And I could surgically introduce those chords because I know what the song is. I know I'm supposed to be going four, three, two, five, one, walk down from seven. Six to a dominant two. So I go, okay, what if I do? And then do a seven, three, six. Because that's my destination. That's my six right there. I'm trying to get to six. I know I can just do a seven, three, six. But instead of doing the regular. Or I decide I'm going to change the quality of this chord from a half diminished to a flat 13th, flat 9th. And then instead of just going to a 3, I, I went to sharp 11th. Drop on a minor 9th. And so I could do that because I know the chords of the song really well. So that's step number two for using altered extension. Learn the song in its original form first and learn it really well. Step number three is to know the melody of the song. And this is something that is overlooked so often. Folks play the chords, they work on the chords, and if you say, can you play the melody, just the melody alone? No. You have to learn the melody the same way you learn the chords. 
yeah, if you're accompanying a singer, congregation, or even another instrumental player, most of the time you're not playing the melody. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't know the melody. As a musician, you need to be familiar with all aspects of the song. The chords, the melody, the rhythm, the bass line. Yep, you're not playing those areas or those sections or those instruments, but you have to be aware of what's going on. And especially as a pianist, we have to know the melody of every song we play, right? Know the melody, be able to play it, because once it comes to now substitutions and alterations, it is that melody that's going to be our guide so that when we're playing chord, it fits. It has to fit the melody. So if I'm doing... Up the octave. So I can play the melody, and you can hear the melody of the song all throughout. So once time comes now for me to add stuff, I can know what chords are going to clash with the melody and avoid it. So when I'm doing... I can... Or you see, I can weave these chords in the melody, or rather, weave these melody in the chords that I'm playing because it's for he is worthy, worthy. Worthy for he is good, yes, he is good for he is worthy, worthy for. You know, I can weave it in and it sounds beautiful because I'm following my melody. And this takes us uh, to sort of 3B. I'm voicing my altered extended chords to the melody. And I talked about that last week. So even when I'm doing right here, minor 11th right here, the melody is what's creating that 11th. For E. And I'm using right here this tritone substitution, hmm? which is a sharp 11th, or you can think of it as also a flat, but yeah, sharp 11th, but the melody's at the top, so I can go, and when I introduce that E flat, now this chord becomes our sort of sharp 11th flat 9th, and these, these are what's creating the alterations, but they're all diatonic what I refer to as diatonic extensions. These notes, they all belong to the key of A flat. So they're diatonic extensions because I don't have to go outside of the key. In fact, the only note that is outside the key is this. All my other notes are diatonic notes, diatonic extensions. For he Worthy, worthy, for he is good. So that's sort of step number 3B. Step number 4 now, which is the one of the most important steps, is you must be familiar 
with your passing chords. You must be familiar with passing chords. Why is that? Because the use of altered extensions often, like 99% of the times, you're basically using passing chords or you're reharmonizing the song. There is no other way to fit all these non-diatonic chords in a song without it sounding funny. It's because we're loading it with passing chords. And a few months ago, we talked about the gospel passing chords. And I released a course on it, the gospel passing chords in the key of C, the seven type of gospel passing chords. So what are these seven types of passing chords? You have the diminished chromatic passing, the minor chromatic passing, the two five one passing, the tritone substitution, the chromatic median, the secondary dominant, and the first inversion passing. I know it sounds like a lot, and that because that's because it is. So once we're talking about using altered extensions, we're also talking about reharmonizations, and we're talking about a huge part of that is going to involve passing chords. And there are seven different types of passing chords you can combine, you can use them individually. And so you want to learn more about passing chords, go check out the gospel passing chords in the key of C. It will clarify all of this for you. That's step number four. You got to understand passing chords, else you're not going to really know what you're doing and when to do it and how to do it. All right? So. Step number five now is voicings. Voicing, 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 voicing. You have to be able to know how to play the same chords three or four different ways. When we're talking about altered extensions, however, usually the left hand stays consistent. For example, if I'm voicing, if I'm voicing a sharp 11th like this, you know, I can move the 7, I can put it at the top, right? I can even move the ninth and put it at the top. And so using just these three notes, I can decide which note I wanted on the top based on what's happening with the melody. And that's what voicing is. But if you notice, my left hand stays the same. This is sort of a shell voicing. In shell voicing, this means we take out the other inner parts of the notes and put it at the top. I could have even done stuff like this. And this would be a more shell. So as you can see, these inner notes have been removed, put in this right hand, so this sort of shelled in the left hand. Oftentimes, I just dump the third down there and focus on the extended notes. If I'm voicing um, this chord right here, I can do the same thing. I can come down here and do a cluster. So then this becomes on the top, or I can do the cluster up top. Hmm? Or depending, depending on the Spawn with your hands, you can do stuff like. Or. Or. Wait, but I. Yeah. And this is voicing. It's chain, it's deciding which note goes on the top and which notes stay buried, especially if you're dealing with clusters like this. I like to avoid minor clusters, minor interval clusters. So like, for example, if I put this B flat down here, you hear that? In some cases, this might work, you know, but in this case, when I'm doing, uh, it works better to have the melody, uh, the melody sort of walk down like that. Because we're doing uh, so it works nicely with the melody. That's why I decided to voice those chords like that, because of the melody. 
when you're voicing voice to the melody or voice to a diatonic harmony. What do I mean by voicing to a diatonic harmony? A note that's a third, a fourth, or a sixth away from the melody. You know? Worthy, worthy. I still hold on to that melody note. Four. I'm voicing to the melody a little bit. Even if I release that melody, I would have still have this weird sharp 11th right here. Four, but it still works because they're third apart. He is good. Sometimes it might even come down here. So you can do. Because you know, it's good. The melody sits here, but you know, these sort of. Gives you a nice sort of pentatonic sound. Mm. And the last step I want to point out today for working with alto extension is to experiment with simple songs. Take a song that just have a few chords or just have one chord per measure or two chords per measure, you know, especially slower songs. You know, this song that I, that song that I use today, it's more up-tempo, but you know, it's easy to take the slower songs and try to work on these concepts. Take like the chorus alone, or even half of the chorus of a song, and just see if you can sort of piece some of these concepts in. Bite-size information. Don't try to take this complex song that already have a bunch of extended chords going and then try to add to it, you know? Because the thing is, as you get better at this, you're going to be able to start applying it to more faster songs, to already complex songs. You can even make it more complex and more interesting. But you got to work your way up. So these are the tips I wanted to point out for you guys today. Number one, altered extension is not a beginner concept. So if you're a beginner, don't get overwhelmed by this stuff. In, 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 uh, actually, if you're a beginner, just forget about this stuff for a few years. Because there's a whole host of other things you need to work on as fundamentals. That's going to make you into a really good player. You don't really need to use altered extensions and passing chords to be a really good pianist. You don't. I teach this stuff because I like this stuff. And especially as a gospel pianist, this is rooted in a lot of modern gospel, the concepts of reharmonizations and passing chords and substitution. So if you want to acquire that sound, these things are necessary to get there. But if you're not interested in that stuff, that's cool too. So I'm just talking to the folks who have been experimenting with this and they're not getting the sound that they want. Step two, you gotta know your chords really well. Learn the song in its original form, in its original key, using the original chords first before you start to experiment. Yeah? Step number three, know the melody really well. You might not be singing the melody or playing the melody, but you have to be able to know the melody. I mean, what if you want to just do solo piano and play the chords in the, on the melody? I just heard something. But I want you can go. And all I did there was worthy. Instead of going to five, I went to the substitution of five, the tritone, and then dropped to a three. Then. So 
So with the melody it sounds, he is worthy, worthy for he is God. He is God. So you see the possibilities of taking this thing out. The more you get comfortable with it, you know, it's just the possibilities, just they're there. But, you know, it takes some discipline because I know a lot of you guys are like, yes, I want to be able to do that, man. And you're like, man, I just need to be able to learn one, learn it in one key and I'll be good. But I can do all this stuff in all keys, you know, and it took me 15 years of constant hammer and experimentation and practicing. So I'm just saying that you guys will get there. You can get there. But just don't try to avoid the steps. Don't try to avoid the steps because this ain't no simple stuff we're talking about. It is complex harmony. But you all can do it because I remember a few years ago I was in the same boat and I would just watch guys do the stuff and be blown away because I had no idea what they were doing. You know, it was way over my head and now I can do it. So you'll get there. But I was taught from early to never skip the steps. You know, all those guys would say, man, don't skip the steps. Just work on it. You know, you'll get there. And so here I am today. Step number four, you must understand the seven passing chords. That's like the gatekeeper. You won't be able to do the stuff until you understand passing chords. So work on passing chords. Voicing, voicing, voicing. One of the things that separates uh, advanced players from intermediate and beginners is that we are very peculiar about how we play our chords. It's not just good enough to say, I'm playing a C13 here. It's how am I playing the C13 that makes a difference. You have to get a little bit sort of picky about how you voice your chords because that's where the prettiness comes from. So you got to start experimenting with voicing. Don't just settle for any sound. Move the notes around in the chord until you hear that sound because you will hear it. You will go, mm, yeah, that's the sound I want. Yeah. So be picky with it. It's okay to be picky. Yeah. And step number six is to experiment with simple songs. Start with simple. I would, when, I would, when I was experimenting with this stuff, I would take every nursery rhyme <laughs> I know and I would try it. It's like, I'm going to advance, make this uh, nursery rhyme sound more advanced. And then I'd move up from there to simple worship songs. Worship songs that only have five chords. So, and I would start there and work my way up to the more advanced choir pieces and, and stuff like that and hymns, you know? So that's what I have for you guys today. Hopefully this was very enlightening and helpful. My goal really is to keep you guys motivated, but also keep you honest. You know, this is not some, I'm going to become advanced playing six months thing. Every player that you admire who can play really well, they put in years. None of them just propel to the top. And so up and, you know, Part of the reason a lot of people now feel like they can just skirt the fundamentals is because of places like YouTube. You know, there's so much information accessible on YouTube, which is great. Because that means you can learn all this concept faster than I did because I didn't have YouTube. But it also gives people the delusion that I can probably master this in six months. You know, so don't be swayed by the sort of microwave movement that you're going to become an advanced, from beginner to advanced in a year. That doesn't exist. Unless you probably invest 10 hours a day, every day, which I know nobody has that amount of time to invest. Just work on the fundamentals. Stay honest with yourself. Don't skirt the things. There's going to be a lot of things that are not fun. Nobody likes to practice scales and arpeggios. And nobody wants to be able to transpose stuff in other keys. You know, you just want to, just play the stuff that you know how to play in the one key and you try to be advanced in that one key. But being able to play advanced chords in one key doesn't make you advanced. And once you get to the next key, you're back to beginner again. No, you don't want that. So, you know, I know I'm going off on a rant right now, but it's just that I get so many messages and emails about these things that folks are missing what really matters in terms of growth from beginner to intermediate, to intermediate advanced to advanced. There's a process, and in each stage, there are new concepts, there's new information, and new things you have to practice. Learning the piano is a two-fold system. It's theoretical knowledge versus 
practical knowledge. And so a lot of cats can, they probably know the theory. It makes sense mathematically. They can understand why it work, but they don't know how to do it here. They don't know how to put it in the songs. And that's because all they've been focused on is understanding it from a theoretical perspective. So if you're one of those folks who you can understand the theory, that's great because that means you're halfway there. You know, have to just spend time getting it here and it's going to take time, you know? So just know that it's not about just understanding the theory. You got to roll up the sleeves and you got to jump in there and you got to practice because that's how you develop your ear to that sound. You're going to make mistakes. Some stuff's going to sound wonky and then you're going to start slowly find your way around and go, oh, so if I do this, this works. And if I do that, that works. There are a lot of things that's going to reveal itself to you while working through it that won't reveal itself to you from just a theoretical perspective. All right, rant over. I'm going to cut it right here. If you're new to my channel, you like this stuff and you want more of it, please hit that subscribe button down below. Give me a thumbs up, hit the notification bell so that every Wednesday when I post, you're notified so, you know, I can keep you honest and I can keep you motivated and just, you know, give you more information along the stuff. All right. Also, if you have not been over to Piano Lesson with Warren, the two courses that I mentioned today, the uh, Gospel Passing Chords in C and the Altered Extended Gospel Passing Chords, well, Altered Extended Gospel Chords in C. Anyway, those courses will really help to solidify things for you if you're on that intermediate advanced level and things are a little bit cloudy for you and you just need some guidance. These two courses will really make it possible for you to break through that ceiling into the next level. All right? Piano Lesson with Warren, go check that out. So until then, keep listening, keep singing, and keep practicing. And I'll catch you next week, same place, same time, right here for more piano lessons, how to become a better gospel musician. Have a great week and we'll talk soon.